Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode 8 of this Hamilton Tigers franchise mode on NHL 20. Today, guys, we are going to be jumping into the 2022-23 season. If you missed last episode, go check it out. There will be a card somewhere around here that lets you know exactly, or it leads you exactly to the playlist. Um, but anyways, if you missed last episode, this is how our team's currently looking. Uh, Luke Leopold is honestly shot up in rating. He's looking really good now, really promising. Lafreniere, same kind of deal there. He's starting to look like a really promising prospect. And I mean, with three first overall picks in the last four or five years, you kind of would be hoping that uh, our team's going to be pretty good in the future. Uh, as far as the AHL goes, we do have two more elite wingers coming up in Robert Bjorkstrand and uh, Topi Coloma. So those guys are both going to be nice additions to the team. Honestly, a lot of this forward group could be jumping up within the next season or so. And uh, defense-wise, we have some good players in here that are going to grow and get better. But at the same time, we kind of need players now. Because, well, I mean, yes, we signed some short-term players here in Klingberg, Paranko, Giordano. But Matsumoto is the only real kind of long-term guy here that we have currently. And, uh, yeah, we're waiting for guys like Bangoa and different players like that to jump up. Um, as far as goaltending goes, right now we have Demko and Jari. Um, you know, goaltending's hard to find, man. Like, Abister, hopefully he can start growing here soon. But who knows, honestly, it's very difficult to judge how goalies are going to grow and change throughout the course of a franchise mode. And yeah, they can be quite difficult to predict sometimes. So our team status is champion. I don't know if I fully agree with that, but at the same time, I wouldn't be horrified if our team kind of tanks it again because... There is a franchise right winger in here that, you know, I'm interested in. Yes, he's a 6'4", 2 forward. And there's also a defender in here, which is a whole big whoop. Like, we barely actually see defenders that are elite at this point in franchise mode. So, yeah, kind of just anything at this point would be nice. Um, who knows what we're actually going to get. Our scouts are usually quite indecisive and make things a lot more difficult than they need to be but uh yeah no franchise winger that's kind of the big point of this episode is hey if we do tank it that's not a problem but i would like to see some success at the same time because we can always trade up in the draft i mean it's a quote-unquote lottery legends franchise mode here we also do carson lambos should be nhl ready by next season hopefully hopefully I mean, how has he done in the dub? Um, not constant improvements, but I mean, he did kind of deserve that sixth overall draft pick where we picked him because of how he performed the year before. But yeah, I don't know if we're going to make any trades for picks. We could, but at the same time, I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I don't think there's really a lot of pieces we want to move at this point that are actually going to affect anything hugely in the long run. We got our main franchise pieces here in Matsumoto and Esteban Slaney, who we just drafted, so hopefully he'll get some ridiculous growth. And then we can move a guy like Duchesne. You know, there's like there's options. But um Yeah, hard to predict. I don't think we're gonna make any other trades. We currently have two first round picks and then just a lot of other kind of regular picks in here. Two, three, four, two fives. We have Buffalo's fifth all the way through 6-7, and Anaheim's pick is supposedly more valuable, but it's hard to tell. Arizona's got a pick there on the block. Who else has their first rounder on the block? Looks like Columbus does. So there's options for, you know, teams we could trade for in picks, but I don't know if it's a smart idea or not to do that. I think it might be better to just hold on and say, let's see how things go and move on from there. Because, oh gosh, this guy really turned out. Clinton Flynn, holy. Offensive defense, left-handed offensive defenseman. Jeez. 
But, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think we're going to make any moves. We could try to predict which teams are going to do good versus bad this season. Yeah, I don't want to risk a lot here. I think our franchise is set up in a fairly good spot right now where we're cycling in players through free agency, growing them a little bit, having some good performances from them, and then trading them off for top-end kind of prospects. I think that's a really good system we've got in place right now. And I don't really want to mess around with it too much. I mean, one more pick might be a safety net just to make sure that we land somewhere in the top 10 in the draft. But I don't know who to trade. And that is kind of the problem here. So if I was going to move anybody, I mean, Silvestri, no, I don't want to touch my defense because... They are going to be valuable, especially a right-handed defenseman. That's just that's unforgivable if we trade him. So, yeah, I don't know. We could try like soccer in plus. I don't know. I don't know. Let's try soccer in plus a second rounder next year, and that gets accepted. Okay, so we did trade one player there, but you know, not not terrible like that's a pretty decent trade especially if arizona tanks and that pick somehow turns out but i think we are going to get into a full-on franchise or franchise a full-on season sim i'm not going to sim the entire franchise mode guys don't worry but yeah i'll do it like maybe halfway checkup and just see how things are going where our picks are kind of projecting and then i'll be back with you guys at the end of the season Okay guys, so halfway through the season, 41 games in, the Tigers currently sit second in the Atlantic Division with 46 points in 41 games, not too bad, Johnny Goudreau leads the team with 49 points in 41 games, and uh, I mean yeah, not too shabby is definitely the way I would describe it, our team's doing alright. I cannot remember who else we had for picks. We had the Ducks, who were definitely the lowest of our three picks. Ducks, Coyotes, and then our own. So yeah, not exactly looking great for winning a lottery or anything like that. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to jump back into the sim here right away and uh, you know, just kind of get on with it here. Um, One other thing I just noticed, guys is we've played half the season and Esteban Slaney is seriously starting to increase in rating which you know you could say is a problem or you could say it's a gift because of the way the lines should stack up after this but apparently not actually that works we'll try this so we're gonna put Slaney first line see if he can continue with his points uh, he really does not have any here, so you know any kind of playtime is just going to help with developing his growth. We're gonna put Duchesne on the third line, and um, you know maybe we trade him. I don't know. That's an option. Let's try to find a trade because Duchesne hasn't put up the greatest points this season. He hasn't been terrible, but he has not been great either. So yeah, just like twenty-seven points. In 41 games, that's not good enough, Matt. Sorry, like, let's see what options we have. No trade results found. Dang. Okay, let's propose a trade then, because, you know, Matt Duchesne's fairly valuable as a player. And, um... 11 minutes later. Okay, at this point, we're going to say screw it. I'm just going to take the picks we have we'll make trades in the draft or whenever but our team is looking for playoff success so we are going to jump back into the sim and hope that you know our team can make the playoffs and the other two teams that we possess the picks of can you know tank it so i will see you guys at the end of the 2023-24 season okay guys so, to end off the 2022-23 season, the Hamilton Tigers finish with a 41-31-10 record, 92 points, and qualify for the playoffs. First time in franchise history. 
only took four seasons. Johnny Goudreau leads the team in scoring with 78 points. Again, another high in franchise history. Our team really has not had a lot of scoring overall, to be honest. Esteban Slaney struggled a bit, as you can see in his first year in the league. Um, I mean, you look at all of our great players here, they all struggled in their first season. Like, it's not... It's not an uncommon occurrence that your rookie season does not go well on this team. 35 points. What did he have? 30? No, he had 20. No, he had 38. Okay. Yeah, so it's not uncommon that you don't have a good first kind of season here in Markham. Or in uh, Hamilton, not Markham. But you can see, not bad for scoring for our team. That's much better than we've had in the past. A lot more well-rounded and well McDavid leads the league with 109 as a 26 year old but he goes minus 10 and the Oilers don't qualify for the playoffs ouch Kucherov right on his tail with 108 Drysaddle with 104 Stamkos with 105 Sagan with 106 Pedersen and Giroux also break the 100 mark and Pedersen hits a franchise potential at 24 years old. That is scary. McKinnon also with 94. Dominic Kahua. That's the Crosby effect right there. Solely the Crosby effect. As far as goalies go, Martin Jones gets 43 wins on the season. Not too shabby, Martin, for a 33-year-old goalie. That is fantastic. Jeez. Um, who is our best goal? It would have been probably um, Demko, and he finished with 25 wins in 60 games. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty bad. As far as rookie skaters go, Anton Lundell puts up 57 points in his rookie year not bad Shane Wright as a third overall pick in that last draft puts up 44 Curse Lake who's 25th in 2020 puts up 47 and Chekovic here 7th rounder by San Jose puts up 56 points Dang, son. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the bunch of teams had weird seasons for sure. As far as defense goes, oh, Ekman Larson is going to be getting himself the con or the Norris, not the Consmice, the Norris. Tony D. Um, mm, what? Ick, excuse me? He is the what? Oh my gosh, Quinn Hughes, you animal. Jeez. And he has a picture in there now. Wow, that is new. Normally, Quinn Hughes never had a picture before. And, yep, Darlene's in a franchise. We saw that one. You know, I'm hoping... Oh, Klingberg's in there. I see you. I see you, John. Okay. I'm hoping that, you know, some of... Our defensemen like Matsumoto or guys like that will eventually grow to be defensemen like these guys putting up crazy points. So the other teams we possessed the picks of consisted of Anaheim, who made the playoffs, and then Arizona, who did quite poorly. They were, let's see, how many teams were ahead of them? Ahead of them. They had... 76 points, so Edmonton, Montreal, Ottawa, Florida, so that's four. They're fifth worst in the league. Fifth worst. That doesn't guarantee us a lottery pick. I mean, a, a, a top-end draft pick, but it's not bad. As far as the Tigers go, we finish 13th. So our highest placement in franchise history, 
we finished 14th our first season and somehow just like we were terrible which doesn't make sense because like we didn't make the playoffs but we were good but we weren't it was a confusing situation anyways um as you can see here arizona very much did not do well 28th place finish out of 32 teams so yeah we made the right decision there trading away that one player in the like second round pick or whatever it was it was worth it so overall best season so far in franchise history we've actually made the playoffs the next step here is going to be if we can actually win a playoff series or not with the team we have i think it's possible i don't know if i'd bet on our team but it's possible especially with you know an 88 rated lafreniere 86 rated esteban slaney like there are some deadly players in this team yeah, Giordano. Giordano, man. Come on. Like, I was expecting a little bit more out of you. Yikes. Okay. That's not great. Please tell me he's retiring this year. Because <laughs> we are not going to be able to trade that 7 million. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I messed up with that. Yikes. That was last episode. You guys should be like, you guys should be, yikes, you guys should be like ripping me in the comments right now for that two-year deal on Giordano. That was not okay. So overall, pretty solid season. I'm happy with how our team did. And, you know, we might get lucky with the lottery. We probably won't as far as picks go. Um... If we look at the AHL, the Lions did quite well. They made the playoffs here. And uh, actually, as far as our scoring goes, I want to show you guys a couple things throughout this team because there are some very crazy uh, things going on as far as player growth goes. So, yes, Matsumoto is kind of like our best player here, but can we not... Oh, no, it's in the system here. So, yeah. So, <laughs> as you can see, our team is starting to shape up quite nicely. Carson Lambos, you animal, put up only 48 points, apparently. But, uh, you know, he was pretty darn solid there. 83 overall. Bjorkstrand's hit an 81. Gunler's hit an 80. Kiloma has hit an 80. And Nylander has hit a 78. So we are like almost set here for bringing some guys up, clearing up some spots on the team for new players to move in. It's exciting, man. It's exciting. But our team is still, you know, a little ways away from seeing long term success. And yeah. Overall, Markham had a fabulous season two, 47 wins. So they topped us by quite a bit there. Our top scorer was Braxton Walton with 76 points in 82 games. Look at that, 57 assists. My guy. Robert Bjorkstrand was very good too as a two-way forward. Like his passing ability is underrated. 54 assists. Topi Coloma, seven or 68 points. Nick Benino, 63. I think our goalie was quite good here, too. Yeah, Tyler Parsons had 37 wins. Abits, or Abister only had 10. So, yeah, not awesome, but not bad either. So, by the looks of it, we got the yellow matchup here in the first round. The Boston Bruins will be taking on the Hamilton Lions. Toronto doesn't even make the playoffs, so we are representing all of Ontario at this point. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, the Tigers went 9-1-0 in their last 10. I swear to God I didn't play any games. And, uh, yeah, not bad. Jeez, that was actually a crazy winning streak there. But, 
Boston Bruins coming up next episode. Oh, that's going to be fun. Probably going to be pretty tough too, to be honest. But you know what? Boston's a good team. So are we. And uh, we'll put up a fight, to say the least. Buddy. Buddy, we stand a good chance against Boston. So I think what I'm going to do here, since the Tigers have made the playoffs, I think we're actually going to go into depth on the playoff series here now. Kind of like I did in uh, the new Edmonton, not the new Edmonton series. It is a new Edmonton series, but in the Oilers series, how we kind of started to slow sim games in series and actually go in and just watch gameplay. I think we're going to start off on the right foot with Hamilton and do that as well with this franchise mode because you know i've seen a lot of comments about not playing games and that kind of stuff so i think that is what we are going to do with the tigers here against the bruins next episode and well we'll see how it goes if we get knocked out first round then yeah we'll move on to the draft pretty quick if we win though that'll kind of cut off the episode there so that is going to be it for me. If you guys are enjoying this series so far, please go down below and consider subscribing. Also, smash that like button. Let's see if we can get 20 likes on this video. And uh, feel free to comment. Let me know your thoughts, what's going through your head. Give me some feedback. And that's going to be it for me. This is Etanius signing out. And see ya.